Welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about responsibility. While we take a look at some of the hardest workers in nature. They're tiny, but speedy. What is a slow mode kind of day? Hey, I'm Carter. Man, I'm Zeke. We're talking about responsibility, which is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. Okay, what's with the slow mo? Winter break was so awesome. Sleeping in every day, no place to go. And then, bam, back to school, homework, activities, chores, even though it's only been a couple of weeks. It's too much. I wanna go back to doing nothing. Uh, yeah, I, I get that. <sighs> I'm stuck in vacay slow mode. Uh, dude, same. I'm doing this house of cards competition with my cousins, but I can't seem to get it off the ground. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I would totally live there. Yeah, well, I'm good at sketching ideas. Building, not so much. Ah, persistence, my friend. Dude, I've tried this 37 times. Ah, but you lack expertise. Oh, you're the expert? Well, my grandpa's the hardest working guy I know and he's taught me everything he knows about building anything. Cards included. Sweet. Let's make it. All you need to build a house of cards is a deck of cards. Done. Oh, hey, is that Cyrus on your cards? Best dog ever. He's been in the family almost as long as I have. Well, show me what you got so far. Okay. I start like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait. Wait, okay. I just need to get them to balance. Let me try again. Okay. There. Cool, so now I... Oh. Can I take a crack at it? Be my guest. Oh, I'm always prepared. We can each build one. Alrighty. So first, you start by making a triangle, or as sciencey people call it, an apex. Then, you build a second one right next to it. And after that, you put a card right on top, like a roof. Whoa, uh, hold on. That is exactly what I've been trying. Hmm. Uh, where and when did you get these? Uh, well, my aunt gave them to me for Christmas. She had Cyrus's picture printed and everything. So, the cards are brand new. Yeah, I opened them this morning. Aha! Aha! But come on, can I get a light bulb? Want to share your light bulb moment? Yeah. Friction. Friction? Friction is a force that acts between two objects that are in contact with one another. It slows or stops movement between the two surfaces that are touching. Without friction, you get what happens when mom asks me to mop the floor. So, without friction, stuff slides? Yep, and your playing cards are brand new and slick. So, no friction. Mm. So, if I want to build a house that sticks, I need to wear these out. Or, just use some of mine. Let's get to work. Speaking of work, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Proverbs, which is full of wise sayings. Many of these came from King Solomon. Solomon became king at a very young age. He was worried about how he could lead without much experience. One night, God spoke in a dream and told Solomon he could have any gift he wanted. Solomon could have asked for money or power, but instead, Solomon asked God for wisdom so he could be the best leader for his people. God listened and honored Solomon by making him the wisest man on earth. Many of the things Solomon learned and said were written down together with other wisdom. 
The sayings called Proverbs are short sentences or stories that help people make wise decisions in their everyday lives, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Did you know that God designed all of us, every single person, for good work? Mm -hmm. It's actually one of the first things we discover in the Bible. The first thing God did after creating the world and then Adam and Eve was to give them the amazing job of caring for creation. Our job is to love God and love others. And there are so many different ways we can do that. But you know, it often takes hard work. And in Proverbs, we find some unlikely role models for hard work. Ants. <laughs> That's right. Those creepy crawlies that most people try to step on? They're rock stars. Did you know an ant can lift up to 50 times its weight? And for every human on Earth, there are one million ants? <sighs> okay, maybe um, don't think about that part too much. But ants are fascinating, and there's a lot we can learn from them. In Proverbs 6, we read, You people who don't want to work, think about the ant. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander. It has no leader or ruler. Ants show us how to work. Ants don't need anybody to tell them what to do. They each have their own jobs and they work hard every day to do them. In an ant colony, some ants find food, some feed the larvae, others take out the trash, and some ants even stand guard. Come on everyone, let's go. Working is better when we do it together. And just like an ant, you can take responsibility for your own chores and schoolwork. That's right. Don't you wait for somebody to tell you to get started or to follow through. And if you need help, take responsibility to ask for it. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Ants show us something else too. But it stores up its food in summer. It gathers its food at harvest time. So ants also teach us when to work. They know the best time to put in hard work. In the summer and fall, there's lots of food. Ants gather plenty to eat for themselves and to take back to the nest. Oh, maple syrup jackpot over here. Need an extra hand, a leg, with this aphid. Then in the winter, the ants can cozy up and rest, staying warm together safely below ground. You know, that's a great picture for us. When it's time to work, work hard. And when it's time to rest, rest well. Learn how to truly take a break. Not on a screen, but hanging out with friends, spending time outside, discovering something new, or just being still. God designed us for both rest and work. They go together. Okay, let's take a look at the whole thing together. You people who don't want to work, think about the ant. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, it has no leader or ruler, but it stores up its food in the summer, it gathers its food at harvest time. So, in the spring, when the ants are out and about, take a good look. I mean, you might just discover a whole new world. <laughs> the end. Wow, ants are amazing. Though, I still don't want a million. <laughs> well, the best thing is they don't give up until the job is done. So, what's our part in the story? Well, one of the reasons ants are awesome is because no one has to tell them to work hard. They know what to do and they do it. You mean they anticipate? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they actually do. In fact, Jesus is the most incredible example of what working hard means to us. He came to rescue us and he followed through to the very end. I never thought about it that way. We've each got work to do too. That's for sure. You probably know what your parents and teachers expect of you, like making your bed or doing your homework before dinner. And you don't have to wait for somebody to remind you three times, just jump to it. Like I could surprise my parents by putting the dishes into the dishwasher before they even ask me to. Or if you see someone who needs help, don't wait for them to ask, offer a hand. That's right. And even if a job feels hard or frustrating, you can stick with it, come on like my laundry, because somehow there's always more. Yeah, it's even important to work hard when your part doesn't feel super important, like in a group project. Your hard work is actually a way to love others and honor God. So take a lesson from one million of your tiny friends. And do the work God designed for you. I think you got it. Keep your eyes out for the ants and see you next time. 
So, here's the thing. Work hard even when you feel like giving up. Even when life seems as slippery as a new pack of cards. Oh, hey, check this out. Look where hard work got us. Uh, hey, I gotta wear these cards out too. How about a game of snap? Hard work, but somebody's gotta do it. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next, next time. time. One, right. two, three, four, snap! That took four hours.